Hi, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and today we're going to do something a little bit differently in terms of a review. Um, and the deck that we're going to be looking at is the Beautiful Cr Creatures Tarot uh, by J.R. Rivera, and the artwork is by Jasmine Beckett Griffith. This is a uh, Schiffer deck. It has a really beautiful Ali Dunn box that has a little tab with a you know, hard cardboard opening. We have about the author and about the artist, a place for the cards, and a place for the book to set in as well. I think that personally Llewellyn could take a note uh, from Schiffer Publishing on making their deck so that you could still have a good size guidebook, um, but still have a really nice box that can slide into your shelf and look really nice. So the box is fantastic. I've done this already a few times, and so I've decided to do it this way uh, rather than um, the other way because I'm going to be up front. I think there's some issues with this deck, um, and I did a complete walkthrough, but I was kind of repeating the same thing over and over again, and truthfully, by the end, I was getting pretty irritated, <laughs> and... Um, and that showed. And I don't want to do that because um, there's, I really want, and I've said this before, but I want to make this very clear, that I am fully aware of the amount of work uh, that goes into making a deck like this, uh, both from the author and from the artist and from the publishing company who puts all their work and, and money um, into creating a deck. And so I always want to be responsible respectful of that. Um, but at the same time, I can't only review decks that I like uh, because, you know, that, well, I mean, I guess I could. And there are people who do only do reviews of decks that they, um, that they like. Um, I don't really want to do that because my, uh, from my viewpoint, my job, so to speak, is to give you uh, the information that you need so that you can make a decision on whether a deck is for you or not for you. Um, and so that may mean me doing decks that I don't particularly like. Um, I think that uh, viewers that have been with me for a while know that I do give decks a very fair uh, chance, uh, as seen in the uh, Angel and uh, Fairy Tarot by Doreen Virtue. So I do try to give decks um, a very fair chance and an understanding that just because something isn't for me doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with the deck. Um, so, but I became irritated with this deck, uh, because I do think that there are some things in which somebody who is purchasing this deck should be aware of, because this is not a cheap deck. This deck, I didn't purchase this, this was gifted to me, um, you know, by somebody who this didn't work for, um, and so this is probably, again, this will be something that I will be passing forward, um, but this is originally $35. That's not a cheap deck. Uh, whoops, <laughs> that's not a cheap deck. And so I think that anybody going into the deck needs to, to buying the deck needs to have all the information they need to decide whether or not this is a deck for them or not. Now, I'm not going to do a complete walkthrough of this deck. I will link uh, a video in the description box below. Divinatory has done a full walkthrough of this. Um, and so you can see all the cards that way, and I will link that there. Um, but I was like at that teetering point point of just not doing anything with this and I thought you know what that's not the right way to handle it either uh, because I don't want to only do reviews of decks that I like. Um, I want to point out some basic things before I get into basically my review of this deck. I have things split up here for a reason. It's a little messy but I didn't want to have to go digging for things. Um, first of all, here's the backs. I actually like the backs. They kind of have like a Medusa figure. Um, it's reversible, and I like this kind of print that's going on here around there. I think that's quite lovely. Um, I do think that um, the cardstock is decent. I mean, it's not great. I'm not a huge stickler for cardstock. Um, it shuffles nice. Um, it's a kind of odd size, so it makes shuffling a little bit weird. Um, but... Um, you know, all in all, I, you know, the cardstock is fine for me. I don't have any big issue with it. Um, 
it does have obviously quite a lot of I mean, it's got a border here and it's got this bigger band at the bottom so you know I'm not a huge fan of that but I have ducks that I you know can look over that I do like that there's like little scroll work here there is detail here um, that's quite lovely it's just you know yeah, I'm never a fan of borders, regardless of the deck uh, that it is. So, um, so that's like the basics on the cards itself. The book is uh, very uh, beautifully put together with grayscale artwork, uh, lots of like extra scroll work, like these kind of inserts. Um, Schiffer does a beautiful job at uh, their packaging and this is no exception to that. They did a beautiful job. Uh, the book is about 150 pages I want to say. Yeah, about 151 pages, and then there's some room for notes at the back. So this is you know this is very well put together uh, in terms of the book. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, because it's different than a normal deck, and it's actually the one thing I actually like about the deck, um, is that the, whoops, I missed one of them. Well, oh, here it is. Um, there aren't a court cards per se. There are uh, a set of... Uh, what I think would originally be um, pages, um, there are nymphs of their suits. Nymph of fire, nymph of water, nymph of earth, and nymph of air. Um, so there, instead of the pages, we have these nymphs that are basically an elemental card. I like elemental cards. My issue with these elemental cards is my issue with the entire deck. That you, if you took the name away from this, there would be no way for you to say that that was the nymph of air, that this was the nymph of earth, that this was, or this was the nymph of air, sorry, uh, that this was the nymph of water, or that this was, you know, that at least they're red, I suppose. Uh, but they're just, they're faces. They don't have anything to do with their elements. Um, these are pulled from pre-existing art, and so it, it has no context outside of the label. But I do like the use of uh, having a nymph of each of the elements. Uh, one thing that this does highlight, though, is that these are called Nymph of Air, Water, Earth, and Fire. The rest of the deck are Airs. Who says Airs? I don't know. Waters, Fires, and Earths. Uh, so unless Earths is being possessive, Earths creatures, I don't know of anybody who says Earths. Um or airs. It's air, encompasses all air, no matter how much of it there is. So that I find to be effective and not effective, but affective. <laughs> and I, I find that to be slightly ridiculous. Um, but you know, that's something you could get over if you like the rest of the deck. The, the rest of the court card, so each suit has three uh, astrological signs that are associated with that element. So we have the jar of airs here with airs here. Uh, so for Aquarius, Aquarius, sorry. Then we have the scales of air for Libra and the twins of air for Gemini. And so then so forth. So each one, fish, scorpion, and crab for waters, ram, archer, and lion for fires, and virgin, bull, and goat for um, earths. Um, I actually quite like that. I think it's a great idea. They do in the guidebook relate it to the court cards, uh, but I think you're better off just leaving it uh, being astrologically what it is. Uh, these are also the only images that I can tell in the entire deck that were made for their astrological signs. I don't know that they were made for these cards, but they were definitely made to embody each of the astrological signs. And so because of that, they work. Um, and so I think that's really nice. Um, I like that aspect of the deck. So I wanted to point those two things out because those I think are pretty neat and I like it. 
There are two extra cards in the deck. I am not a fan of extra cards all that much anyways. Um, the only one I've ever kept in a deck has been the Fountain Tarot's Fountain card. Uh, this a card I think is problematic. It is you are one and the message of the card is about being enough of who you are as being, you know, you're wonderful, you're fabulous, who you are. And yet we have a masked person. Um, the kind of symbology of a mask doesn't really go with the go with the uh, in my mind doesn't really go with that idea of being who you are and being kind of uh, in, in uh, celebrating who you are because masks are about hiding so um, that to me it doesn't work on that symbolic level but that can just be a personal thing um, and then we have the supernatural which is about um, being careful, you don't know, you know, kind of being curious about different things, but you know, you might hit on something that's not so great, you might hit things that are great. Uh, this just, you know, doesn't really do anything for me, uh, but this one to me is problematic. So those are the two extra cards. For the rest of the deck, my, I, I'm just going to sum this up because I really don't, um, you know, want to beat it over, which is what I ended up, I think, doing in the individual card walkthrough is I just started repeating myself and getting irritated. <laughs> um, the problem is, is that these images, uh, in my opinion, this is all my opinion, uh, there are people who love this deck and can get over these things and that's great and you may be one of them and you may see this and say, you know what, I can live with all that and I still want to get the deck and that's fantastic. I'm just giving you my opinion and my kind of review of it and the problem that I see with this deck is that these images were pre-existing art. And the problem with pre-existing art, unless it's done very well, which I have personally not experienced very many times. Uh, the Tarot of Delphi, which I just reviewed, actually does, I think, an amazing job with it. Um, but for the most part, I've not had good experiences and generally get those decks and move them on because I, they don't usually work. Because I feel as if they are not doing justice to the card, the traditional card, and they're not doing just justice to the image, which you know probably has something to say outside of the tarot card is trying to be crunched into and it, it doesn't even do uh, justice to the author of the tarot deck or guidebook who then has to try to crunch two things that don't fit together and somehow try to make them fit and so I don't think it does justice to anybody um, and I just don't think that it generally works except for there are exceptions but I think as a general rule it doesn't work and in my opinion it doesn't work in this deck um, Again, it's entirely my opinion, um, but I think that this deck could have done beautifully as an oracle card uh, deck. And there is nothing, It's um, I don't understand, to be honest, why um, people and companies do this, because... It's almost as if uh, they are feeding into the idea that somehow tarot is better than an oracle. Um, and it's not. Tarot is an oracle system. It's just a very traditional oracle system, a card system that has very traditional meanings, um, that has 78 cards. Everything is there for a reason. Um, it's been set up that way. If you want to deviate strongly from that, that's fantastic. Make your own system so that the you don't have this weird marrying that doesn't work. That's my opinion. And I think that, that um, there is nothing less than about an oracle system. Our oracle card deck isn't less than a tarot deck. Um, so let uh, something be what it should be. And this, in my opinion, shouldn't be a tarot deck because it just doesn't work. You have to work. They're having to work way too hard in card after card um, in order to make this work as a tarot deck. And so I don't think it should be that hard. If it's that hard, then just make it an oracle card so that we can enjoy these images. Some of these images are fantastic. I don't, I'm not particularly drawn to this art style, but I think the artist is fantastic in what she does. And so I think, you know, let these images stand on their own um, as oracle cards. Truthfully, if, if I were to be in love with her artwork and want these cards, I probably would trim it all down and, um, 
just make it an, uh, it, and you know read it uh, intuitively as an oracle card system myself. Um, I'm not going to do that to this deck because I, you know it just doesn't appeal to me enough to do that. But that's probably what I would do if I wanted to collect the images, um, but um, you know just didn't want to use it this way. Um, so I, I'm, and it's happened card after card after card. So I don't want, and I don't want to keep repeating myself. So I want, I'm going to just give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now there were some cards I just thought were terrible. Uh, these apparently are, uh, you know, uh, classic art pieces that have been sort of restructured. Uh, There's a lover's card I think is terrible because. A, it's very strange seeing this restructured art piece. Uh, and B, um, they don't look like they're in love. They don't look like they're connected. They don't look like they've made a choice to be together. Uh, they both look very unhappy. This doesn't say anything to me about lovers. Um, and, and it's just weird artwork. When the rest of the deck is very much her kind of signature style, you know, with close-ups pretty much of, of you know, Figures with the kind of little larger head and the larger eyes. You know, this is her style, and it works uh, for what that style. And then all of a sudden to come on, this is just to me very strange. Um, this one was just strange in general for the nine of fire. Uh, and this, same sort of thing. Apparently, this uh, is an, another art piece that has been redone. Um, except for this was a creepy dog and now it's creepy cat and this is a mask from something else that is stuck on here and again this is the two of cups the two of waters there is nothing loving or romantic or anything about these couples whatsoever and they're just strange so those to me just don't even work even if I liked her um, you know if I was really into her artwork I wouldn't particularly like those um, and they're strange um, the other examples of why I don't think this works is, is it, for example, this is a beautiful card. I love this card. I love the picture. Uh, this is a Four of Air, which in the guidebook talks about repose and resting and all this. And uh, the, the key word is repose. And we just have this, uh, you know, this portrait of somebody sitting upright. If I didn't know what Four of Air meant... I would get nothing about repose or rest from this picture. And that's how a lot of the cards are. They could be portraits of anybody and they're just kind of stuck there. And so if you don't memorize the guidebook or know what the four of airs means, this isn't going to do anything for you. Um, so again, beautiful image. There's nothing wrong with this image, uh, but it doesn't marry with the four of airs. And I and this happens, you know, card after card after card. In my opinion, there are some that you know you can get where they're going, but they far outweigh the one. The ones that you have to kind of try to figure, don't have any clue why they've done it, I think outweigh the others. I'm going to use this one as an example. This is the Eight of Airs, which would be the Eight of Swords. I mean, there are very many um, like this, and it, it, that's what started to get me really irritated. And so um, I'm just going to show you this one as an example, uh, and then, you know, kind of call it what it is, that, you know, just not beat a dead horse, so to speak. So here we have, and again, this is a beautiful image. I mean, I think Oracle, you could do a lot with this image. Um, I think it's really sweet. Um, I think that it's a, it's a fantastic piece of artwork. Um, so the Eight of Airs, you know, nothing got me stuck in this rut. I actually did this to myself. I'm just too afraid to get out of it and move on. That's what this little, cap they have this little caption like it's t talking or somebody's talking to you. And I have to say those are quite annoying. Um, this is not written to a teenager, but it has a very... Uh, Vo the voice is very teenagery and sometimes uh, snotty and sometimes sarcastic, but I don't think in a in a creative way. Um, uh, it's just mostly I found those to be irritating. Um, so the key word for this is imprisonment, which makes sense for the Eight of Airs. But this is apparently a young maiden from the year 2021. 
Nothing about her says the year 2021. She looks like maybe a Victorian era, era or something like that. But she's a young maiden from the year 2021, is trapped in the prehistoric era, where she will remain for millennials to come. She is responsible for taking care of all the dinosaurs who live in that era. She has no choice but to comply to this task. The triceratops inside of the glass bowl represents the manifestation of a different problem and the frustrations that hide deep within her subconscious mind, keeping her stagnant and unable to move. Her mind is somewhere else, and this causes her to neglect the fact that she needs to find a way to liberate herself and those creatures trapping her there. I, I'm sorry, but that to me makes no sense. Um, so we have a girl from 2121. A, doesn't, nothing about this looks futuristic. She's trapped in an era, a prehistoric era, where she has to remain for millennials while she's responsible for caring for all the dinosaurs of this era, and she has no choice in this matter. Uh, then we have this bowl here that has a dinosaur in it, but that's not the problem. This is a representative of another problem that has nothing to do with the first problem, but yet they're both about dinosaurs. None of that makes sense to me. Um, at all and I mean it makes sense I understand this little story thing but it makes no sense with the card I understand the entrapment part of the the, the eight of swords um, but I just think that's my issue um, is that this, this author is having to work way too hard to make this image fit into the eight of swords and in my opinion it, it doesn't succeed so there were many cards like that that I found to be quite um, irritating. So, you know, I think that, and again, I, the artwork, there's nothing wrong. It's a beautiful piece of art, and that happened over and over again where, you know, they're pretty artwork. It's not my style, but they're pretty, they're beautifully done, but they don't fit, or they are, like, shoved into the mold too hard to try to make them fit, um, or they just simply don't have anything to do with it. Um, and so... I think that this is readable, um, but you really are going to have to go off of the guidebook and ignore the fact that it's Eight of Airs or whatever the tarot number is and basically read it like an oracle system. I don't believe, and there are a couple cards that you can get uh, the what the image is out of it. Like this is the Three of Swords. There is a heart with something stuck in it. Um, so you can get the meaning out of some of them. Uh, but some of them is just, you know, it's working way too hard uh, to try to make it fit. And I don't think it works. So that um, is my, uh, my look at uh, this particular deck. Um, again, I'm not going to go card by card because every card I'm basically going to say the same thing. Yeah, except for a few exceptions, I'm going to say, well, that's really beautiful, but it has nothing to do with the, the two of the four of airs um, or that's um, really pretty card but I don't even know where are we going with it in the story here um, so my 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 consensus is in my personal opinion this should have just been an oracle system um, instead of a tarot deck uh, attempting to be a tarot deck because it's not uh, in my opinion working very well as a tarot deck and if somebody you know had this as their first tarot deck I think it would definitely be confusing to go on to other cards. Um, her artwork, this is another one of hers. I have some of her oracle decks to do, I, and I've blackened the sides of this, which is probably not fully dry, uh, because even if I don't keep this, I think whoever gets it should have the blackened sides, because how awesome does that look? Um, this is an oracle system, and I think it actually, you know, whether or not I love the art or not, I think this actually functions very well as an oracle card. Um, deck and I'll be reviewing this one and I have a couple of her other oracle um, decks with this same artist um, Jasmine Beckett Griffith and I just think that that's probably where uh, the power of images especially images that are pre-existing uh, are probably best used in something like an oracle system and that doesn't diminish it there's nothing lower or lesser about an oracle system it's just let's not cram something that's not intended for a tarot into a tarot deck um, 
so there that that's my that's my synopsis of the beautiful creatures tarot um, again if you simply love a uh, jasmine beckett griffith's artwork um you know and you think you can work with those things that i've explained then more power to you but at least before you spend 35 dollars, i want you to at least be aware of it there are ways you can do this i think you can use this just reading using the guidebook um and don't you know just for just a, kind of ignore uh these things which is a little bit what you sometimes have to do even with like the chrysalis tarot or something like that um you know just let it be what it is and you can um just enjoy it and you may love the images enough to want to take the time to do that the other thing you could do is trim this down and make it an oracle deck if you're just a fan of the artwork and really want to own this then that's another thing that you can do so there are things that you can do um and some people as is might absolutely love it and get something out of it um and so that's fantastic, but I at least, again, want to make people aware of what it is they're getting, and then they can make the decision whether that's something that's worth it for them to work with um, to get uh, good use out of their money and out of their time spent with something. So I hope that this is helpful. Again, I really uh, struggled with whether or how to, to manage this um, that is respectful to the people that put a lot of hard work into this, but is also... Um, you know, giving my honest opinion so that people who are going to spend their money on something are aware of what they're getting. So I hope that I accomplished that, um, and I have, hope you all have a wonderful day.